When men come together and they claim to have a service, by the way, I always challenge people to tell me where in the Bible does it say to have a service? Because I know the scripture that says that the Lord is our reasonable service. No, the, the scripture says that we're supposed to come together and fellowship. Scripture says if you have fellowship with one another, then your fellowship is truly with Christ, and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses you from all sins. Fellowship, not service, fellowship. Hello, this is Robert Beno, Babylon Rescue, coming here today. Let's just uh, start off with prayer, okay? Um, I've got uh, Meshach here on the other line, and we're just going to talk and and see what the Lord has for us uh, has for us this evening. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus, and I thank you, Lord, oh God, that you are the beginning and the end, and that you know exactly, Lord, what your will is. And I just pray, dear Jesus, that you would cause us to have your will uh, tonight as we speak. And Lord, if you want to bring someone along to speak with us in this Zoom meeting, you know, that's uh, that is up to you, Lord. And we just ask that your will be done in Jesus' name for your glory. Amen. Um, you know, Meshach, in um, the day we live in, it seems that we've gotten used to certain things that I believe are, are really unbiblical, uh, ungodly. Um, well, let me just start off by just describing a story. You know, years ago, I started a church with, at that time, which was one of my best friends guy was actually at the birth of one of my children. And we were meeting at a home, and um, a stranger came in with his wife. I think it was his wife. I'm not sure. Maybe could have been his girlfriend, but I think it was his wife. And we had um, in our group there, we had people who said that they were prophets. We had women who prophesied a lot. And uh, my friend was also one who prophesied a lot. So we had we, we, we were around surrounded by people who prophesied a lot, as best I can tell you. And this man came in. I didn't know who he was. And I'm telling you this story because uh, years later, now that I look back at it, I'm really kind of embarrassed and I'm kind of ashamed. Because two of the women that were prophetesses there, I you know, I, I called them prophetess. Uh, two, two of them started coming against this man who had come in and were accusing him of all kinds of things. And I thought, of course, these women were prophetesses, and they would they had heard from God, and I wasn't going to question them. And this man was shortly after came in was barraged with all these accusations of of wife abuse or or I don't even know who the woman was that was with him, but he ended up turning around and leaving, and you know years later I felt really ashamed by that incident that I had sat there and allowed these women to attack a total stranger. You know now certainly they had in them they had some sort of something. They, they just didn't like this guy. I, I don't know what it was. Um, but, you know, years later, I look back at that, and I say, this is not, this is not what the scriptures, this is not what the Lord calls us people 
to do when dealing with strangers. One of the things that the prophets uh, complain about, cried about, is that judgment has fallen in the streets. Righteous judgment is fallen in the streets. One of the things that we do when we come out of confusion, this is Babylon rescue, what we do is we start letting judgment flow. We show that we're not confused anymore. We do this by having judgment. I had a a woman on Facebook that sort of reminded me of this incident last week or a couple weeks ago or something like that. This woman uh, never met me. And, you know, what I do a lot of times is I go on people's posts and I say things regarding their posts that the Lord has shown me. And sometimes it's kind of deep. And it's like sometimes they don't understand this. Like, where are you going with this? Um, anyway, I was faced with another person out there who believes that according to their feelings, you know, they have this kind of judgment. I don't know if you've seen this judgment. This judgment is, is, is I got to check in my spirit. And so therefore I'm right. And something's wrong with this guy. Um, that isn't discernment. It isn't discernment. Now, the scripture says to judge no matter before the time. I mean, Paul the apostle even said that he was in perils with false brethren. I mean, you think your discernment is better than Paul the apostle? I don't think so. I just don't. People really need to be careful how they treat strangers. The scripture said, for some men have entertained angels. The scripture calls this, he says, judge not that you be not judged. For the, by the same measure that you judge other people, you will be judged by that same measure. You know, when you see somebody like myself, you know, walking out there, you may feel something. You may even get a check in your spirit. But, you know, you should be careful because you really don't know. I mean, I've always, I've always welcomed people. And I do want to be judged. Yeah, I really do. I do want to be judged. I want people to come and look at my good works. And I like to see them glorify my Father, which is in heaven, based upon those good works. That's, that's what I'd like to see. And if there's any sin in me, if somebody is wiser than I, if somebody can see something that I can't see, of course I'm going to consider it. But, you know, that t typically isn't the way things happen because people aren't, they don't come and point out my sin, what it means if they don't love me, is that it? Or they got to check in their spirit. I don't understand. But the scriptures doesn't give you the right to judge a person or judge a matter for as far as that's concerned before you hear it out. I think Proverbs would say a fool does that. You know, we have to get away from churchianity. Now, that's a word, churchianity. 
uh, church, a word not even found in the scriptures, by the way. It's ecclesia. Now, I know the big church men have turned the, the term ecclesia into some sort of a clergy system, which is really foreign to the scriptures. Uh, uh, ecclesia is the called out ones. Jesus said, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst. That's what ecclesia is. Um, Jesus also had a way of reminding people I mean, I believe he told his disciples, he says, even if a man gives you a cup of cold water in my name, he will no way, in no way lose his reward. The scripture says, he who receives you receives me. He who does not receive you does not receive me. You know, Paul had this problem. There was a man that loved to rule over, he loved to have preeminence a man that would not receive the brethren. This is a time and a day in which we have men out there, I call them sectarians, sectarians. They love to have preeminence among the people. They love to be the rulers. They love to shut off any questions or dissenting voices that might question the things they teach. This was not found in the New Testament church. The New Testament church, in fact, it was said of the New Testament church, even Jesus said that he hated the deeds of the Nicolaitans. Nicolaitan comes from a term which means to conquer the people, to rule over the people. I remember talking to a man once who was one of these Nicolaitans, a guy that didn't like to listen, he liked to talk, and he figured everybody else should hear him. This man even came up with the doctrine when I read him how a church is supposed to operate in 1 Corinthians, which clearly says that everybody in the church that's been given gifts are to come together and operate in those gifts. He said that that didn't apply to us today. You know, when Paul said, he said, the head of every man is Christ. The head of the woman is the man. Jesus is the head of his church. His church, ecclesia, is the bride. Jesus, the groom. Jesus is the head of his church, not man. When men come together and they claim to have a service, by the way, I always challenge people to tell me where in the Bible does it say to have a service? Because I know the scripture that says that the Lord is our reasonable service. No, the, the scripture says that we're supposed to come together and fellowship. Scripture says if you have fellowship with one another, then your fellowship is truly with Christ, and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses you from all sins. Fellowship not service, fellowship. One of the prophets in the Old Testament scriptures said these words, he said, you love to worship me with your lips, but your hearts are far from me. God is not impressed with your service. You know, when I go to pray, when I ask the Lord, how am I supposed to pray? 
I know, and I'm mindful of the scriptures, not only does the Lord hear the prayer of a righteous man, and the prayer of a righteous man availeth much, but in that righteousness is this little thing, is that we always pray according to the will of God. The scripture says, if you pray according to his will, God hears you. So, if I'm a righteous man, meaning Christ is living in me, it's not my righteousness, it's his righteousness. I pray according to his will, and he hears me when I pray according to his will. Today, we've gotten to the point in which when we come together for a service, everybody is scheduled to do a certain thing. There is no spontaneity of the Spirit of God working among the people. We always have a form and a function. I'm going to call it a liturgy, whatever you want to call it, where we come together and somebody does this in a certain order. I remember a church I church I grew up in. It was it was first the fast songs. And then the slow songs, of course, the slow songs were right after the offering. And then the minister, the one minister, the one pastor, which is completely unscriptural, got up and gave a sermon. Another thing that's completely unscriptural. And so we went in this particular order every week, and it was just monotonous over and over and over again. It's kind of sad that people don't realize that God has called not an elite group of clergymen, but he's called his people, all of them. And it says in Corinthians, when you come together, one of you has a song, a hymn, a spiritual song. One of you has a word of encouragement. One of you has a prophecy. It says, let all be done in decency and in order, but it certainly says, let all be done. Today, let all be done means whatever you do is out of order because we have our program. Look at the program, people. Don't come in there and actually seek the Lord to lead you and guide you. Seek yourself to hear from God so that the work of building the saints up in the most holy faith can come about. No, we are not called to have a service. We are called to have fellowship with one another. And if we do so, the scripture says that our fellowship is truly with Christ, and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. And I can tell you this, that big religious men who deny the power of God cannot abide this. They don't, they aren't being led by the Spirit of God. They don't believe what I'm saying right now. What they want is they want a religious service. And that's what they pay their money for. No, um, that isn't what God has called us to. God has called us to fellowship. And there is no clergy, laity distinction in Scripture. Did you know that the word laity comes from the term Nicolaitan? Did, did you know that? The word laity comes from the term Nicolaitan. That's a fact. The Lord said he hated the deeds of the Nicolaitans, hated them. 
Paul was speaking of this man who refused to receive the brethren and loved to have preeminence in the ecclesia. And I would be interested to know exactly how Paul handled that, because I'm pretty sure that Paul uh, wasn't sitting there as some sort of a district supervisor of the church in the New Testament, uh, and he would just have this man removed and replace him with somebody else that he liked better because this man didn't receive the brethren. No, I, I think it was pretty much different. I think the power that Paul operated in was not some sort of authority where you call the, call the police and have somebody kicked out. No, Paul uh, actually uh, had the wisdom of Christ, and he had the, the uh, words of the Lord inside of him, and those things had great effect on the New Testament church. That's what I believe. Was some sort, it wasn't some sort of ecclesiastical order that prevailed. Now, the Scripture says we are to <clears throat> convince the gainsayers. If you're able to convince the gainsayers, you're able to reason with them, and you're able to help them to see that what they're doing is wrong. No, the, the, the reality is simply this. If you <clears throat> reject the brethren and you don't receive the brethren, you don't receive Christ, and you really should fear because the Lord has said, as you have judged others, you will be judged by the same measure. Paul himself said, judge no matter before the time comes. You just, it's not a check in your spirit, sister, brother. It's not. You got to have patience. You got to wait. And you have to not come to judgment before the time is right. Oh, there's just something about that guy I don't like. Well, maybe it's you. You ever thought about that? Maybe it's you. But you know, if you're a person of faith, you know what you can do is you can obey the scriptures and you can say, I'm going to hold my judgment back. And once the Lord brings to light these things, I don't know what it is that I'm feeling about this person or that person. But once the Lord brings to light these things, then God will expose these things. And not, not only will I have not just a check in my spirit, I'm going to know exactly what the problem is, and I'm going to understand why. So now I can actually tell this person, this is the sin, this is the problem that, I, that we're having. Because I was willing to wait patiently. Why? Because I fear the Lord. That's why. You know, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge. That's what the scripture says. We are so a people so confused and so full of sectarianism. It's sickening to me every time I hear people that think that they can stand in the place of Christ among his people and reject whom they want to reject and accept who they want to accept. No, that's not what the scripture says. No. If you reject the people that God accepts, you reject God. That's what it is. You don't have the right. This whole idea, I don't know if you've, you've ever heard of this, this famous, uh, uh, I don't know, is it a play? Is it, is, it's a poem or something? Dante's Infernal. He's talking about a, a wicked pope a wicked pope, and he had the right to disfellowship people, even though he was wicked. But he couldn't keep them out of heaven, but he could bar them from fellowship. No, he can't. 
No, you can't. No, the uh, harlot believes she can. She know what the Lord has to say about the harlot, right? He says, I'm going to strip her naked. I'm going to put her on the ground. I'm going to show all the world her adulteries, and I will not meet her as a man. This is the Babylon I have called you to abandon, to come out of. No, you can't fellowship with who you want to. You have to love Jesus. If you don't love Jesus, you don't love his people. You read John, right? He who hates his brother is a liar, and the truth is not in him. And no man who hates his brother. Another way of hating your brother is not fellowshipping with him. You know, you don't break bread together. The Lord has made it clear, as you've done unto the least of these, my brethren, somebody earlier this week and on Babylon Rescue said, oh, that's just talking about poor homeless people. No, it's not. No, the fact is, is that there are being Christians in jail. There's been, you know, this is my brethren. As you've done the least of me, my brethren. Not just talking about good works. And, you know, there's a, there's a lot of things about um, being poor. You know, you, do you know that all the poor make God their refuge? All of the poor, read Psalms. All of the poor make, make God their refuge. Jesus said, blessed is the poor in spirit. You know, a guy that's in a, in a, in a, in a really poor country, and he's, and he's greedy and angry over his garbage pile, he's not poor. Blessed are the poor in spirit, the scripture says, and Psalm says, all the poor make God their refuge. People think that being a Christian is about looking good and doing good works that seem right. Oh, that poor guy is homeless, and I'm going to go help him. I'm not saying there's something wrong with helping poor people. But you know, all the poor, the true poor people, make God their refuge. That's what you need to understand. And so when I said, as you've done unto the least of these, my brethren, you've done it unto the Lord, uh, they're his brethren. The least of these many times are the brethren of the Lord. Jesus was an image despised. They wanted to make him king. He wouldn't be their king. He didn't want, the, he didn't want to be their king. He already had a kingdom. Jesus died a, a death that everyone despised. To, to die on the cross is as cursed as he that dies on a tree. Jesus did not come as some sort of superstar. Really stop this stuff about Jesus being a superstar. He wasn't a superstar. You know, since the Son of Man has no place to lay his head, foxes have holes in the ground. The Lord was basically homeless. And yet the Lord took care of him, and we all know today that Jesus is the most transformational figure that's ever graced the face of the earth. But when coming back to this issue, I mean, that, that woman last week that told me there was something wrong with me couldn't tell me what it was. I'm sorry, but that's not okay. No, there, there's nothing wrong with me. There, maybe there's something wrong with you. But unless you have judgment, then you're supposed to wait. Don't judge before the time. Wait. Maybe you don't understand me. Maybe, you know, on Facebook, you know, that people don't, you don't really have the same experience with people on Facebook that you have face-to-face. -face. Certainly you know that. You know that you can't judge people based upon words on Facebook. Sometimes you have to get face-to-face -to, -face to find out what people are really like. You know, and, and, and the fact is that all of us, all of us have been in confusion. That includes me, all of us. 
the Lord is calling his people out of confusion. And the reason for that is because if God allowed us to have the same language, we would just be like Nimrod and be building that denominational tower into the sky, and we would take the Pope and make him the one man up there close to God, Nimrod himself. No, the Lord has said, no, I'll confuse the languages. So he hasn't allowed any of the denominations to get too big. And, you know, last week we talked about the Methodist uh, denomination splitting yet again. I was driving to work today. I saw a Methodist church had the gay pride flag on it. Cool, Methodist. Really cool. Yeah. But, you know, the fact of the matter is, is that people that really love the Lord, like me out here, we just want to, we just need a cold cup of water. You don't want to give us a cold cup of water because you hate the people that God loves. And that's really a problem for you. It's not going to go well for you. Scripture says, blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. So again, something that I can't stress to you enough is you need to be careful in your judgments of others and be quick to apologize when you realize you've misunderstood stood someone. No, I'm sorry. You don't, you don't get, I'm telling, let me say this again. You don't get to be a sectarian because the Lord if you, if you reject his people, God will reject you the same measure that you meet out to other people. God will meet that back to you again. Don't you fear God? Don't you realize what you're doing? Sectarianism. God is not a, a, okay with that. You claim that other people who are within the pale of orthodoxy, oh, they're saved but we just have differences of opinion, so we won't fellowship together. If you have a different end times view than me, then you're not going to get to fellowship with me because my church believes it this way and your church believes it that way. Well, God is calling us to leave that. That's called confusion. You don't get to reject God's people. Or maybe you're one of these sectarians like that man Paul spoke of, that just love to have preeminence among them and wouldn't receive the brethren. God, the Lord, hates the doctrines of the Nicolaitans. He says it over and over again. God despises the doctrines of the Nicolaitans to conquer people, to rule over people. God hates. When we come together, If you want to be great, be a servant. If you have the ability to serve, serve. That's what makes a person great, to be able to serve other people, not to wield authority that you don't have. Well, there's my talk for this Thursday, Babylon Rescue. We're looking for the coming of the Lord. We're looking for a time and a place in which God is going to cause his people to become a holy nation once again. We believe the time is soon that the Lord will have himself a one people, one bride, and she will be sanctified before the face of the whole earth, and no one is going to question who is and who isn't. We're not going to be 20,000 different denominations. That's the faith I have. God bless you. Babylon Rescue at it again this July 28th, Thursday. God bless. Bye now.